I thought that was a very odd game today, but I'll tell you what, I'll take a point. Hello everybody and welcome back to OUFC Fan View. It's Ian here once again and it's time to do another review of another Oxford United game. Today the U's were on the road again. They were away at Portsmouth. The champions of League One last season were miles better than Oxford United in League One last season, but things have been a bit different at the start of this championship campaign. Portsmouth are yet to win a game, whilst United sit quite comfortably in mid-table. So you had Portsmouth without a win, you had Oxford who hadn't won a game away from home. You probably could guess how this one would end, but there certainly was incident, and we'll get into all of it, but this one did finish. Portsmouth won. Oxford United won. Another creditable point for Oxford United on the road. and We'll go over everything that happened in this game. We'll go over the team news. I'll give my match review and I'll give my final thoughts for both sides at the end of the video. You can jump to any point of this video if you like. You can just use the timestamps down below. That's absolutely fine. But if you do, the very least you can do is hit like on this video because that does help me out a ton. And if you do like the content, consider subscribing. Let's have a look at the team news and let's start with Oxford United. A couple of changes for Des Buckingham's side, predictably. When I saw Elliot Moore hobble off at the end of that Luton game, I kind of knew the skipper wouldn't be available for this one. So it's Sam Long who comes in in his place and it's Sam Long who is skippering the side. The other change for Oxford United is Kyle Edwards comes in for Owen Dale. Now this is Kyle Edwards' first start in about a year. Let's just hope he can stay fit. But other than that, a pretty predictable Oxford lineup. Let's move over to Portsmouth then and John Massinho's Pompey side, as I said, are winless in the championship and still are winless after this one. It has been a tough start for Pompey and they've played most of the heavy hitters, which haven't helped them. But before this game, they were no doubt reeling from that unbelievable 6-1 defeat to Stoke. So it was not really a surprise that Moose made four changes for this game. It started with the goalkeeper, Will Norris, replaced by Nicholas Schmidt. No surprises there. Norris was pretty terrible in that Stoke game. He doesn't even make the match day squad. But you also see Jordan Williams, Elias Sorensen and Christian Sady come in for Swanson, Lane and Blair. Christian Sady scored the winner the last time these two sides played, it was 2-1 victory for Portsmouth on that occasion. But at least Oxford don't have to deal with Callum Lang, as he is out injured, as he seems to love scoring against the U's. But in reality, all Oxford fans are only going to be concentrating on Josh Murphy. It's sad to see him playing in Portsmouth Blue, I must admit. But let's remember what he did last season, as he played a somewhat minor role in our promotion. And he didn't do too badly in that playoff final. You bloody legend. I have something in my eye. So let's move on to the game and it started at lightning pace for Portsmouth. Murphy had a chance in the opening minute of the game but Portsmouth were well on top of Oxford United and they won a penalty within three minutes. A ball bouncing around in the area which Oxford struggled to clear. Will Vaux, his outstretched arm, the ball hit his outstretched arm and the referee gave the penalty. I tell you, Will Vaux. Did he, like, smash a bunch of mirrors before the start of the season? He should have that Balotelli t-shirt of Why Always Me because he just can't... He just always... Something seems to go against him in games. This time he's given away the penalty. Sorensen stepped up to take the penalty, but it's a save from Jamie Cumming who keeps the ball out and keeps the scores level. Cumming even got up to keep the rebound away as well. When was the last time an Oxford keeper saved a penalty? Let me know in the comments. And Oxford were rattled and Portsmouth were right on top of Oxford, but it did kind of calm down after the first 10 minutes and Oxford kind of got their bearings into this game. But the first chance for Oxford really came from an error at the back from Portsmouth. It's McIntyre who made the mistake. It allowed Rodriguez to get to the byline. He cut it back for Mark Harris. And i got to say, Sparky's made a hash of this from about seven yards out. He's almost like kicked his foot instead of the ball. It's a really poor effort makes me worry a little bit about Harris's confidence. And it was Oxford who created the better chances for the rest of this first half. There was a chance for Ruben Rodriguez uh, on 20 minutes, an excellent ball, an early cross in from Kieran Brown. And Rodriguez's movement was really good. His first touch was good. 
but his shot was terrible and he put it wide. And then on 26 minutes, El Mazzuni almost like ran through the whole Portsmouth team. Him and Goodrum picked up a ball from a Portsmouth attack, played a little one-two, and El Mazzuni just kept running. He got a really lucky ricochet where the ball bounced back to him off about three players, but then he just seemed to be galloping towards goal. And he tried to play a delicate little roller into the bottom corner, but Schmidt did get down to make a good save. It was huff and puff from both sides, but not a lot of quality for the rest of the first half and we went in at half time at nil nil look Portsmouth will be absolutely kicking themselves for not scoring that early penalty that's stating the bloody obvious I know but other than that I do think Octa created the better chances in this first half El Mizzouni and Rodriguez seem to be enjoying quite a bit of space that Portsmouth are giving them in front of the back four and it's quite strange because Portsmouth did seem like they were almost playing a little bit like the away side. There was quite a few times Portsmouth were going very direct, almost trying to hit Oxford on the counter-attack. It certainly wasn't a day for possession-based football. But I guess when you've got Josh Murphy in your side, you're going to be wanting to do that because Murphy did look a threat. But I've got to say, Peter Chioso had done a good job on him so far. But really, not a lot of quality and it was anyone's game in the second half. But the second half started with Oxford having to make an injury replacement. Another bloody injury. Ben Nelson, who was struggling at the end of the first half, had to be replaced by Greg Lee. It meant Lee went to left back, Kieran Brown back to centre back. And Portsmouth started the second half a lot like they started the first half. They were on the front foot. They had a couple of chances. Nothing really too troubling for, cu for coming. But it didn't really have the ferocity that it had in the opening burst of the first half. But Oxford just really struggled to get any fluidity in their game in this second half. They really struggled to even just pass the ball around a lot. And it was... A, not a great spectacle, I must say. And it needed some quality to break the deadlock. And on 58 minutes, it was Portsmouth who took the lead and it was Portsmouth who provided that quality. Far too good of a quality goal to be in this game. But it's Josh Murphy who takes the assist on this occasion. He got down the Portsmouth left, the Oxford right. He whipped in an excellent ball with his left foot. And Mahoney did extremely well to get across Kieran Brown, Brown and glance the header into the bottom corner. A quality ball in. Not really too much Kyoso did wrong. You know, you can't stop Murphy 100% of the time. Kieran Brown probably should have done a bit better, but it is really good forward play by Mahoney. And Portsmouth take the lead. I can't stress this enough that Oxford just didn't really look like getting back into this game and Buckingham really needed to change things up and he did. We saw Dembele, Scarlett and Sibley come on. We saw Edwards, Harris and Rodriguez come off and boy oh boy did those changes work. There's Buckingham striking gold again with his substitutions because just a couple of minutes after coming on the pitch Oxford get the equaliser. For the first time in a while, we put a couple of decent passes together. Scarlett to Kioso, Kioso in field to Sibley, who's in acres of space. He can get to the edge of the box. A little bit of a deflection on his shot, but he's drilled it into the bottom corner. Get in there, Sibbers. His first goal for Oxford United, and he is a player I would like to see getting a lot more game time. And whilst this game was a slow burn, it did start to splutter into life, and we started to see some more chances. And Portsmouth, once again, will just be thinking, how have we not won this game because on 75 minutes Sadie had a shot from the edge of the box it should have been routine for Jamie coming but he spilt it but he did do well to get up and block Mahoney's shot on the rebound but it came out again to another Portsmouth player who looked like he could just smash it into the open goal but Sam Long did remarkably well to get back and rescue United that Sam Long clearance resulted in a corner and from that corner Oxford needed rescuing again and this time it was off the post Ogilvy free header he hits the post and the ball bounces almost along the goal line Luckily, no one it didn't hit someone and just go in and Louis Sibley on the other post could just hack it clear. Oxford's big chance came for Dembele, who out of absolutely nowhere, the ball just seemed to hit Dane Scarlett on the back and all of a sudden Dembele was racing clear. It looked like he would have a clear shot on goal, but Williams got back to just about put him off. And I've got to say Dembele's effort was pretty poor. He should be doing a lot better that than that, make no doubt about it. It was a big chance for Oxford United to win this game. Final real chance of this game on 83 minutes was a drive of a cross in from Josh Murphy, a low cross, which Peter Kioso stuck his leg out at. 
and it nearly went in the near post. Coming had to get down to make a smart save. But other than that, other than pressure, other than Portsmouth trying to bombard into the box a little bit and try and get forward, Oxford stood firm and Oxford saw the game out. Not the most convincing way of seeing the game out, but they did it. And we got another point on the road, another valuable point on the road. Portsmouth still without a win, I'm afraid. Let's move in to the final thoughts. And let's start with the home side in Portsmouth. And Portsmouth fans, I would be fascinated to know your thoughts on this game and on your team and what you thought of this performance. I'm just going to say straight away, I know you are missing some key players. I know Connor Shaughnessy is a huge loss. Uh, Yangi, Colby Bishop, massive loss. We don't even know when he's going to come back. And Callum Lang, of course, Jacob Farrell, another one. But what do you think of your side? Because I got to say, I wasn't that impressed with how you played. I, I thought that, yes, you had that option of getting the ball out to Murphy. And Murphy looks pretty dangerous when he's one-on-one -on -one with anyone. But other than that, I thought you were just relying on a lot of just banging the ball forward, getting the ball into a channel and just seeing if a striker can just make something happen or relying on a knockdown or maybe you'll get something from a set piece. It's maybe just indicative of the way you've started the season, just maybe bereft of a bit of confidence. But I really just didn't see a lot of quality in your attacking play. Don't get me wrong, you should have won the game. At this championship level, I just didn't necessarily see like a lot of out and out quality in your play going forward. So I'd be curious to know if that's been the case in other games or whether this was just kind of a a game where the players were just trying maybe a little bit too hard because they knew it was kind of a game where you were desperate to win it. And I would be interested to know what your thoughts are on Messinio and his tactics. And I'll be interested to know your thoughts on um, whether it's panicked stations time. Uh, nine games into the season without a win is probably starting to be worrisome time. I would still say that necessarily shouldn't be because you've still got a lot of the mid, middle of the pack to lower end teams to play. But I'd like to know your thoughts on it. And uh, if you could, just let me know down in the comments. Uh, we always have some good battles with you. It normally ends in a draw, so no probably surprises on that one. And um, good luck for the rest of the season. We'll welcome you back to the Kassam Stadium later on in the season, where undoubtedly it'll probably be another 1-1 draw. And that brings me on to Oxford United. And I've got to say, we were quite fortunate to get the draw in this game. I don't think we were particularly good. I thought for large periods, particularly in the second half, we just stopped playing football. We were just relying on just kick and rush. And it really doesn't suit the types of players like Goodrum or Almasuni who want to get on the ball and try and, you know, play neat, intricate football. The same for Rodriguez. And I thought the players really struggled to get the ball down and just play some football. And I, I don't really know why that was the case. Um, we've saw the players do that pretty well against Luton, but he struggled to do that in this game. Uh, I wasn't that impressed with Edwards in the first half. I wasn't that impressed with Dembele either, really. Um, there was a matter of times they just... Uh, Edwards especially got one-on-one -on -one with a defender. I wasn't sure why he wasn't trying to take them on more often. It was quite often he was almost like playing quite reserved. And... Um, yeah, overall, it just left me quite frustrated. That being said, we did create some good chances in the first half. And we really should have taken one of those chances at least. And I can't really begrudge the effort and the attitude of the players because they weren't it weren't at their best. And they I don't know whether they were a bit tired. It was a tough week, tough game at Luton on Tuesday. And um, whether the, the players were just feeling it a little bit. But they did, they did roll the sleeves up and battle. And you can't really argue with that. The defending, by and large, was pretty stubborn. I thought, you know, coming, made a great, fantastic job saving that penalty. Made some good saves. He made a mistake which cost us in the second half. But by and large, he did a good job at the back. And there was a juggling in the back four, which doesn't help things. Um, I thought Long came in and played superbly well. I thought Peter Chioso was magnificent up against Murphy. Once again, you can't stop him 100% of the time, but he stopped him pretty much most of the time. It's just unfortunate that the one cross he did get in went, ended up going in the back of the net. But... It's always going to be difficult if you're swapping. You know, Nelson had to go off at half time. Obviously, Moore wasn't there. So you're having to make changes to the back four. It's not easy for them to kind of play um, fantastically well. And I do think there was a few hairy moments at the back. But by and large, they stuck to their task. Certainly, certainly a creditable point and certainly a creditable week. Um, I don't think many people would begrudge three points out of these games out of Burnley, Luton and Portsmouth. I think if you'd have said at the start of the week, we'll be unbeaten. I think most people would have been quite happy to take that. My overall feeling is a little bit frustrated because I just thought 
from what I've seen so far this season, this Portsmouth side is probably the poorest side I've seen in terms of a side that wants to try and play football and attack. And I'm disappointed that Oxford weren't able to like get more possession and create more chances and play some better football against them. That being said, Des Buckingham's substitutions worked a bloody treat again, a bloody masterclass again. Louis Sibley, who's barely had a kick this season, who I think should play a lot more because I like his energy. I like the way he plays. He tries to get forward. He tries to make things happen. And I love those sort of players. And he gets his goal, his first goal for Oxford United. And I'd love him to start getting a bit more game time. It is difficult. Where do you fit him in? I know. But I think he's. I think it just shows you again the, the quality of the depth that we've got in this squad making a big difference, rescuing us a point at the end of the day. And the substitutions I thought were good. You know, Scarlett had his hand in the goal. Um, Dembele looked lively when he came on, just not really seeing the end product from Dembele. Get the feeling he wants to try and do everything himself, but and he really did have a good chance to score at the end. But so I think all in all, there'll be things that probably annoyed Des Buckingham in this game because I don't think Oxford played good football at all. And I thought a lot of the times we were just reduced to kind of playing quite a bog standard direct game which doesn't suit us at all but we dug in there and we ended up with a point we didn't throw that point away two away draws in a row pretty good it'd be nice to have got that away win i feel we could have got it today but it just wasn't to be we'll have a nice little break now um 12 points to start this season after nine games it's still an excellent return we welcome west brom Next game at home, and um, who knows? Who, why, why can't we go and beat their next game out? But it is a little bit of a break, a week off for me. I'll be back to do some predictions uh, just before the start of the next round of games, and then I'll do a review of that West Brom game. Let me know down below, Oxford fans. There's bound to be some stuff we missed. Here's one thing I missed, and I meant to put it in there. Set-piece delivery, shocking. Really, really poor. Uh, maybe Will Volks needs to come off it, but I don't really know who else you're going to put on it. Maybe Elm is because he's just, he's just, we're not being able to find anybody in a white or yellow or purple shirt from our set pieces and we don't really create any chances from them. So that needs to step up because we, we really need those kind of cheap goals that you get from set pieces. But other than that, those are minor quibbles. It's been a great start. Thanks very much, Oxford fans. Thanks for supporting the channel. I'll see you very soon.